So primary psychopathy comes out through a genetic flaw, a flaw in the genetics from birth, whereas secondary psychopathy is a learned behavior. I want to welcome you here. My name is David Greenberg. I am a natural law anarchist. I'm also the founder and creator of freedomvibe.art, which is a platform to teach principles of natural law, anarchy, and the occult, also higher consciousness, enlightenment, and spirituality through art and through education. Also, if you're brand new to my work, I actually recommend that you go back and watch some of the earlier videos, especially the video, What is a Right? That's a very concise video that explains the principles of natural law as they relate to objective morality very concisely. I've talked before about principles of inversion and obfuscation, which are two of the favorite strategies of dark occultists to obfuscate, to, to keep us away from the truth and away from occult knowledge. And understanding what is psychopathy and what is a psychopath is no exception to that rule. If anything, it's just as shrouded in complexity and, and lack of clarity as any other topic. And as we're going to see as we get into this video, we're going to see that that's actually for good reason, of course, because the ruling class consists largely of psychopaths and actually psychopaths are drawn naturally to positions of power. So it makes a lot of sense that they would actually want to obfuscate and hide their true nature from most of humanity. If you go to YouTube or any mainstream platform and try to do some research on what actually is psychopathy, you're going to find a lot of confusing information. It's going to be very hard to get a very clear and concise definition. So I'm going to solve that on this video for you. I'm just going to get right to it now and we're going to get you the actual definition as well as the difference between primary and secondary psychopathy. So let's actually look at the etymology of the word psychopath or psychopathy to really understand its meaning on a deeper level. The word comes from two different roots, Greek roots, psyche and pathos. Psyche refers, of course, to the mind and pathos is a condition of suffering or illness. So literally, psychopathy means an illness of the mind or a suffering of the mind. However, more specifically, what it refers to is an inability to feel the emotions in the body that we as human beings feel. And more specifically, emotions that help give us a moral compass, that it can actually guide us morally to make choices between right and wrong action. So these are emotions, you can think of emotions such as remorse or regret for having done something wrong in the past, or shame or guilt, whether it's about a present or a past situation, fear of consequences of taking certain actions, empathy and understanding towards others that we have the ability to harm but choose not to because of these emotions. The feeling of those feelings in our body serves as part of what gives us a moral compass to know whether we're choosing right action or wrong action. A psychopath has no such ability. They literally do not feel in the body the guidance or the feedback based on the morality of their choices and therefore they're incapable of experiencing those kinds of emotions which would guide them to make choices between right and wrong behavior. The difference between primary and secondary psychopathy is very significant. A primary psychopath is someone who was born unable to feel those emotions. It's a genetically driven defect in their brain, in this case, in the midbrain, what's called the mammalian brain, which would normally generate the neuropeptides that would then flow through the body and be experienced in the body as these different emotions, right? And that's a very complex system. I'm, I'm simplifying it because obviously I'm not a neurobiologist. So I'm not going to be able to dive into the deep complexities of it. But at a very simple level, the, the body lacks the mechanism to create those neuropeptides, which then tell the body to react and respond to, in certain ways based on their actions. And they simply do not have that ability from birth, from birth. So any demonstration of an ability to feel his emotions is usually mimicked because they do have intelligence. They still have the intellect. A primary psychopath still has intellect. And as we're going to see in a minute, they actually have some of the other higher faculties that we have as well, including willpower, the will to act and, and take action. And that's going to be very important to understand their impact on society. A secondary psychopath is someone who is born 
with the ability to experience these human emotions, but over time through certain behaviors and state changes in their body, effectively suppresses that ability. So in a way they become like a primary psychopath over time. It is achieved through social engineering and social conditioning. And of course, as you can imagine, primary psychopaths who have positions of power will attempt to fashion society in their likeness. So they will create social constructs through social institutions and through social norms to encourage people to become secondary psychopaths. And there are, of course, many more secondary psychopaths than primary psychopaths. So primary psychopathy comes out through a genetic flaw, a flaw in the genetics from birth, whereas secondary psychopathy is a learned behavior. And that's a very significant difference because secondary psychopathy can be undone. And I know this for a fact because there was a time in my life when I was ex expressing not complete psychopathy, but I was expressing a fairly significant suppression of those emotions. But as I grew and evolved and came to understand what was happening, I was able to extricate myself from that and actually undo that and re-embrace my full range of emotions, which is part of what allows me to get on here and create the kind of content that I do because I'm not holding back and I am experiencing that full range of emotions. So I have the full range and I don't suppress any of them and I experience in my body all of the emotions on a, both a large and small scale, even though at some point in my past I did not and I was suppressing through drug use and through socially engineered behaviors that I picked up, I was suppressing that. Now, it's been estimated that probably no more than 1% of the human population is actually primary psychopaths. And you might think, well, that doesn't sound like a lot, but you have to understand something about a primary psychopath. Although they lack the equipment to have a, an emotional response to their actions based on whether they are morally correct or not, they're not lacking in, in often in the other faculties of abilities that we have, such as willpower. And in fact, they can have a very strong willpower, just like you and I and people who do experience emotions can also have a very strong willpower. But their mode of operation is mainly to control. They seek to control what is around them because that is how they relate to the world. They relate to the world of how, how can I control the world? I'm referring mostly to primary psychopaths, although a secondary psychopath can also experience that. So any psychopath, whether primary or secondary, is going to be drawn to situations where they can control and manipulate. Well, what is the number one profession or maybe the top two or three professions in the world that fit that criteria? Government, police, military. Government, police, and military. These are the top professions. They're not necessarily the only ones, but these are the top professions that draw psychopaths. And they also need that control to hide their true nature because one thing that primary psychopaths in particular do not want is to be discovered. So they go out of their way to mimic normal human behavior and to hide their true nature from humanity. And that's extremely important to understand because if you understand that, you know a lot of what's going on in the world and you can really get clarity about why the world is the way it is and why the ruling class and the police and the military act and behave in the way that they do. So psychopaths and those who want to be able to inflict harm without reprisal are going to be drawn to those professions because those are professions that actually condone violence, coercion, and the theft of people's life, rights, and property. In other words, they condone violations of natural law. They are based on violation of natural law. Now, I have met people in my life who, in retrospect, some of them could have been primary psychopaths, although I may not have been aware of that. And also, I've heard many stories, both directly from people telling them to me and also watching other content, where people, in particular women, I've noticed, seem to attract psychopaths who they call narcissistic, but I, I prefer to call them you know, psychopaths, which is their true nature, who manipulate and take advantage of them because these women express some kind of emotional vulnerability and so therefore they get preyed upon by these psychopaths who ultimately just want to manipulate them for their personal pleasure and because frankly they can and therefore they take action because of that willpower. For all intents and purposes, primary psychopaths are not human beings like you and I are because they lack that complete ability to experience empathy, compassion, remorse, regret, and so forth. They simply cannot be 
considered human like you and I are, and yet they live among us. And that's why I've, I create this video and, and talk about these things on my channel because we have to understand what we're up against. We have to basically defend ourselves through the principle of self-defense against the encroachment and the, the attempts to inflict violence and coercion on us in our lives. And if you don't understand that this is going on, if you don't understand that primary psychopathy is a real thing and that there are really a significant number of people who have this and that they are trying to indoctrinate through their religious beliefs and dogmas, they're trying to enlist and recruit as many secondary psychopaths as they can to their army to, in order to perpetuate their control of humanity, then you're never going to really understand what's going on and, and it's going to be a real struggle for us as humanity to extricate ourselves from our current situation. That's why I share this on this video. They're trying to indoctrinate a lot of us to become secondary psychopaths. And you probably have people in your family who have been recruited to become secondary psychopaths. You yourself may be experiencing secondary psychopathy through years and years of social conditioning. But the good news is if you have even a small ability to feel those emotions that I talked about, then you're not a primary psychopath and you have the ability to reconnect with your true humanity. And I think that's going to be very important. And I encourage you to do that if that's you. Obviously, a primary psychopath, there, there's nothing that I can offer them because we don't currently have a technology or a way to manipulate their genetics to restore their ability to experience human emotions. And frankly, even if we had it, they being most of the ruling class would probably never even want that to happen. They would have zero desire to because they're probably perfectly fine with how they are and they have no desire to change who they are. A lot of the ruling class of the world are many of them are likely primary psychopaths and if they're not they're almost certainly secondary psychopaths so please don't be a secondary psychopath please remember to keep your mind in balance i'll be talking a lot about that in in other videos about how do we keep our mind in a in a healthy balanced state so that we experience the emotions but we're not ruled by the emotions and we're also not completely suppressing the emotions. So I hope you found this video to be helpful. If you have, go ahead and smash the like button on this video. Consider either subscribing to this channel or following me across all the different social media platforms that I post content on. And also I have a link on my website, freedomvibe.art slash donate if you want to make a 100% voluntary donation to help me continue to keep getting the word out here as well. I appreciate you. Hope this has been super helpful. Comment below any questions or thoughts that you have. And as always, I'll look forward to seeing you on the next video.